have y'all heard about Jonathan Majors? Anybody heard about it? I don't know. Maybe it's maybe y'all didn't hear about the news or whatnot. All right, we're gonna take a little time with it as well because I do think it's 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 an important topic to talk about for a number of different reasons. One, because potential uh, domestic violence is a serious situation. Um, there could be ramifications for the MCU, so that's why we're also talking about it, right? Um, and you know, we're gonna talk about potential double standards as well. So um, let, let me before I go into like what happened, let me just say that um, to this day, for me personally. I'm still not in the position to cast judgment on Jonathan Majors yet. And as we go through a lot of this, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go over some of the details of the situations. I'm going to talk about what we know and I'm going to talk about what we don't know. And I know one thing I do know was that the moment I heard this news, I felt disappointed. And that level of disappointment was not because I believe he did it. It's not because I believe he was being railroaded or anything. I was just disappointed that this guy who we know nothing about, right? We don't know. Some of y'all didn't even know he had a daughter. Did y'all know he had an eight, nine-year-old daughter, right? This is a guy who, if anything, all we have known about him is really his work as an actor in, in Lovecraft Country and, um, you know, uh, in, in the MCU, et cetera, and Creed and interviews. That's all we know about Jonathan Majors, right? He does not have social media. And I know we are in a culture where everybody got to be nosy, right? Everybody nosy. We got to know what's going on, who you dating, who you talking to, where you vacationing, what you doing. Like, we don't know nothing about him. So it's interesting to see that when we are met in this day and age of social media when we're met with somebody that we don't know nothing about everybody is just like i don't we don't know how to handle it you either gonna rock one way or you're gonna rock another way or you just because so, i saw people like jumping and being like oh my gosh he's guilty and then i saw the people like no nah, no nah, protect the black man uh, protect it and i'm just like yo what happened to just waiting <laughs> you know like i have never seen a flood an influx of attention on anyone else like this before within minutes i mean the moment tmz dropped that link on what was it saturday or whatever whoo i saw the internet on fire people was coming out the woodworks with every type of opinion thought everything and i was sitting there, i was like yo like we've seen celebrities go through cases trials arrests all of that and i just remember these things would take like days weeks months you know and, it, and then of course you could still formulate your opinion as things rolled out but I was, i've never seen so many people jump on something within minutes and hours it like like, like, look, people became experts all of a sudden. Either you a domestic violent expert or you a, a, a black defense attorney just overnight. I was like, my goodness, people are quick with this. Now, I get it. Again, this is just the culture that we're in. I just thought that that was very interesting to observe. And at the same time, I was just like, again, I felt bad because I was like, man, this guy was like, he, he's like one of my favorite actors. I, and I've said this on this channel. Jonathan Majors has, in my opinion, the same trajectory and the same momentum that Chadwick Boseman was about to have. The moment this man sat here, I mean, he had two number one movies at the same time with Ant-Man and with Creed 3, back to back. That, that was something unheard of, you know? So I'm sitting here thinking like, my gosh, I just hate the fact that you in the news. Like, I don't know if you did it. I don't know if you didn't do it, but I just hate the fact that you in the news. And then let me also bring this up too, because we got 394 people in here right now. Shout out to y'all. Um, I know I might lose some people with this, but I don't care. I'm going to speak from the heart. I also understand the other element of seeing a big, strong black man being arrested. That imagery in itself is also disheartening, mainly because, because of the history of this country, the moment people see a black man in chains, we have this presumption, he did it. There's a lot of people that just believe when you read the sensationalized headlines, Jonathan Majors arrested. He must have done it. Maybe he didn't comply. Maybe this, maybe that. Like, it's just something ingrained, unfortunately, that people jump to this assumption. Let's not forget that there is not only a history of these portrayals because they could have easily said Jonathan Majors allegedly, you know, detained for something. They could have used some euphemism, but they said, nah, Jonathan Majors arrested. And that's it. Not like accused of abuse, not allegedly this and this, just boom, arrested. That's sensationalism. And then you see in his picture, like I literally saw somebody put up a picture. I think it was Newsweek or somebody. And they're going to put up a picture, which I think is, again, part of the problem with the media. You're going to show a picture of him from Creed where he's like throwing a punch and he's looking angry and you're talking about Jonathan Majors, you know, abusive, this, this, and this. How's that going to look if he's proven completely guilty? Again, I don't know if he's guilty or not, but if he was guilty, how is that going to help? Because now you've already tainted public perception before we even got any real facts about him. And that's also part of what I don't like is the fact that we are getting these quick sound bites or these quick headlines. And it's before we can even get to the legal court, the court of public opinion has made up its mind and no matter what is shown, no matter what evidence comes up, 
you already got him as perfectly innocent or perfectly guilty. And that's where I'm like, yo, that's jacked up. It's jacked up that we've gotten to that point in this country, in this culture, because we have to juggle so many different things. We have to juggle the fact that, you know what? There is a long history of men specifically being abusive to women. That is, a, it's a proven stat. It's, it's there. It's a reality. Then you also have another thing to juggle with black men specifically being accused of certain things that don't end up being the case. Perfect example right now would be Michael Irvin. You have that. I don't have another ham, so I'm gonna use this right here. Then you have the other thing to juggle, which is you have the treatment of how certain black people are treated when a law or accusation is made compared to non-white people, Ezra Miller, and how they get treated. Now, let me explain that because I know some of y'all wanna talk about Ezra Miller. No one here is saying that because Ezra Miller has done all these bad things and because Jonathan Majors has also been alleged to do bad things, that these bad things are excusable. No one is saying that. What is being talked about, however, is the fact that we need to be honest about the level of grace that Ezra Miller clearly has been experiencing and been given and that has not been extended to black men. And I'm also thinking about Ryan Coogler. Y'all remember when Ryan Coogler, because of the law, had to be arrested? while he was withdrawing money from his own account at the bank? And what was the headline? Ryan Coogler arrested. Some people didn't even need to see the details. I don't know why he'd be dumb enough to try and steal from the bank. What? What? This man was personally traumatized. You got his image out there. It's probably doing some damage to other you know, people's perception of him. And again, before any facts even come out with Jonathan, before anything is really known, people were quick. I didn't hear not one person say, not one person online. Maybe some people have. I haven't, no, I haven't heard nobody say, maybe there's a mental health issue with Jonathan Majors. I've heard that with Ezra. I've heard other people throw that Ezra's way. I'm saying, how come nobody even wanted to rule that as a possibility? I'm not saying that that's an excuse for Jonathan Majors. I'm not saying that he has mental issues. I don't know. All I'm saying is I'm talking about the public opinion. We give certain grace to other, to other celebrities and other people, but sometimes we don't extend it equally or consistently, especially when it comes to black folks. All right. With all that said, sorry, that was a lot of warm up. Let's go through the facts and let's talk about what's been going on. So according to this, and this was the original TMZ report, but it got updated. Police were told that the alleged victim is Majors' girlfriend. And according to her, they got into an argument while in a taxi returning home from a bar in Brooklyn. Police say, I'm sorry, uh, the sources say police were told that the girlfriend saw another woman texting Majors and she confronted him, trying, not to, trying to sneak a peek at his phone. They were told that the alleged victim girlfriend claims that Majors got mad and that he allegedly grabbed her and allegedly slapped her. We're also told the alleged victim claims he put his hands around her neck during this. Now, I'm going to go through these facts and stuff because I think it's, again, important to make sure we get the facts straight because we're going to get to more details a little bit later. And I want you all to juggle those things when you hear the facts and not what you heard and not what you think other people said, because I'm starting to notice that people are like, oh, I heard this. So it, this other thing got to be true. No, no, no. We're going to go through what's reported because that's all we have. So just one more time. It was, according to their sources, the woman, the girlfriend, told these things to the police that in the taxi, in this cab, all of these physical altercations and this conflict happened. That's what's being reported. Now, the next update was a judge released Jonathan Majors without bail at his Saturday night arraignment in Manhattan criminal court. Prosecutors charged the actor with a misdemeanor, assault, aggravated harassment, attempted assault and harassment. Majors is due back in court in May. Now, that is also important information in terms of the charges that are placed on Jonathan. Actually, let's back it up. According to New York City law, because of this situation, this is a domestic violence situation, allegation, they have to make an arrest. That's what their law, uh, major's lawyer said. That's just part of the system. It doesn't matter if it happened or not. The police have to make an arrest. However, just because the police make an arrest does not mean that charges have to be filed. Now, the woman, the victim, the girlfriend, however you want to call it, they could press charges or they don't have to. At the same time, if the woman does not want to press charges, the district attorney can press charges and say, no, we're going to go after this. Why? Because they can they will usually go after someone and press charges if they feel there's enough evidence to do so. So for whatever reason, the D.A. in New York decided we're going to press charges. OK, so. Everybody that's talking about, but the woman didn't say this or the woman said that or whatever, it doesn't matter. This is now no longer Jonathan Majors versus the woman. It's Jonathan Majors versus the DA of the NYC, okay? That, that's, that's what is happening right now. Now, let's go on because we got more developments. Um, 
let's see, people uh, obtained documents from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office that show Majors was charged with three counts of assault in the third degree, aggravated uh, harassment in the second degree, three counts of attempted assault in the third degree, and harassment in the second degree after he was arrested after an alleged domestic dispute. Criminal defense uh, lawyer, uh, Majors' lawyer, maintained in a statement shared on Sunday with people that the actor is completely innocent and is probably the victim of an altercation with a woman he knows. Okay, that's according to his lawyer. Um, they uh, also go on to say, we are quickly gathering and presenting evidence to the DA with the expectation that all charges will be dropped imminently. Uh, this evidence includes video footage from the vehicle where this episode took place, witness testimony from the driver, and others who both saw and heard the episode, and most importantly, two written statements from the woman recanting these allegations. All right. Uh, then uh, something else to consider here. Actually, let's kind of go back. <clears throat> so I think that's actually very important to also consider, right? The lawyer's like, uh-uh, nope, stop this. And again, this happened within hours. The news about him being arrested, and then maybe 10, 11 hours later, the lawyer's like, uh-uh, we got video, we got witnesses, we got statements. All these charges brought by the district attorney are going to be dropped. Okay, cool. Show us the evidence, right? Because I don't know about y'all. I need to see that video. You know, remember, according to the previous report, the altercation happened in the taxi. Not before, not after, but the allegation is, in the taxi, this is where this fight or whatever happened. Okay, that's what's being said. Um, the lawyer goes on to say, um, I'm sorry, this is from the police. This is what the police are saying. The victim informed police that she was assaulted. Officers placed the 33-year-old male into custody without incident. The victim sustained minor injuries to her head and neck and was removed to an, uh, to an area hospital in stable condition. All right. Now, that is coming from the police. From the police. So the police are saying, this woman came to us and said she was assaulted, okay? That is coming from the police. Again, don't come in here with all y'all other facts from other things. Let's look at everything in context so we can have all the best information to make an assessment. When whatever altercation happened, she went to the police and told them this is what happened and they saw bruises on her neck and all this other stuff. So now, now you have to weigh what's really going on here because the question is the, uh, the assault supposedly took place inside the taxi or the cab, Uber, whatever. That's supposedly where all this happens. And the lawyer saying, well, we got video and witness testimony, all this stuff that none of that happened. Okay. But then you still have the woman going to the police, telling them this. And then they are looking and seeing, we see bruises. We see a reason that this wasn't no made up thing, according to them. This is why they had to go arrest. And the lawyer goes in and says, the NYPD is required to make an arrest in these situations. And this is the only reason Mr. Majors was arrested. Okay. So again, something's not adding up, right? You have bruises, you have, uh, you know, claims. Then you also have video evidence, supposedly, and eyewitness testimony or people that hurt. There's a, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, some other piece to consider. Um, police officers initially responded to a 911 call that Majors made himself, purportedly over concerns about his girlfriend, whom he lives with in a penthouse in Chelsea neighborhood. So this is what the police told ABC. The police are saying, that she that he made the call to 911 about concerns about his girlfriend. And the question really is, what were those concerns? And again, for me, I'd like to hear that 911 call. I'd like to hear what it was, because if he's calling the police, because he's concerned about her, but then when the police show up, she goes and says, something happened, I got assaulted. Is that a lot of he said, she said? I don't know. Was there a second call at all? I don't know. Now, when all of this was said, and, I, and here's the other thing. I want to also put this out there, too, because I want to be sensitive and understanding to people that actually have gone through stuff like this. The reason why I'm sharing a lot of this information is because there are people that have not gone through domestic violence situations. There are a lot of people, unfortunately, that do not understand the trends and the patterns and the things of how complicated these types of situations can be. So I wanted to go through all this because there are, again, a lot of people that just make assumptions without considering all the context. So again, if anybody is feeling sensitive, if this is bringing up triggering memory, I apologize, you know, but I am going to go through the facts. So please take care of yourselves out there just in case. Um, I'll leave it there. Something else to consider here. I told y'all when this news first came out, you also had a lot of people coming out the woodworks, just coming up with their own opinions, thoughts, et cetera, et cetera. This was a wild, your timeline was probably crazy on that day. But two things stood out as well. And it came from two, crit uh, two directors who I guess used to work with Jonathan Majors. And they basically were piling on. Um, so they did not have kind words to say. Uh, one of them even said that he was a sociopath abuser, according to these people. Um, A.B. Allen, who is a director, 
stated in February. So this is before the allegations. This is before the incident. In February, Allen said that there's a particular actor relatively new on the scene who Twitter has violently fallen head over heels for, who in actuality is a vicious, cruel, abusive human being, both professionally and in his professional life. And every new viral thirst tweet about him drives me insane. And later on, they confirmed that it was majors that they were talking about. Now, I should also mention that the same director later on in his Twitter, um, like a couple of days ago, also mentioned that the accusations of being abusive and all that did not include being physically abusive. So again, that's according to that same person on their tweets. They were like, oh, no, no, you know, professionally and all this other stuff, like Jonathan Majors is cruel and he's mean and all this stuff. But they never talked about physically being in that manner. <clears throat> then you have the second director that also came out and said, I'm just going to say this about Jonathan Majors and be done with it. Folks at Yale and the broader NYC community have known about him for years. He's a sociopath and abuser, and that is how virtually everyone speaks about him. It's a shame it took this long for him to be reported. Now, with that said, let me also say that um, I have also heard from a friend of mine who had a friend who knew Jonathan Majors and didn't have the best experience with him. All right. But what does all that mean? What does all that mean? For me, I, I am someone who supports and adhere to the concept of i believe them right like uh, um if someone says i've been abused i've been you know hurt or whatever i believe them right but what does that mean it can mean different things for different people i'm gonna tell you what it means for me when i say i believe you that means that i'm going to take what you say with serious consideration it means i'm not going to just dismiss you and be like ah you're full of it get out of here ah that person would never do that shut up i'm not going to do that when i say i believe if someone says I've been done wrong, but I'm like, I believe you, but I'm going to need more. And right now, the only thing we've got about these other allegations about Jonathan Majors and his character are second to third hand anecdotal stories. I heard from somebody else who heard from somebody else who dated him and this and this. And like, I'm not saying y'all lying, but it's not enough for me to just be like, oh, OK, now he's guilty. And let me also remind people. You could be a mean person. You could be a jerk. You could be an a-hole, but that's not illegal. So maybe y'all are telling the truth. Maybe he is not the best person in the world. But my concern when you call this person abuser, especially with this timing, is was something illegal done? And I understand it's hard for people that have been abused to come forward. I get it. I understand that. But for me, I reserve judgment until y'all come forward. There's a, a, some charges. There's give me something. I need something tangible. Like you're going to press you going to join a lawsuit, something to back that to back those things up, because right now it's just a lot of talk. And again, it's not illegal to be a jerk. And maybe he is. I don't know. I, I don't know. But with that said, you also have the army pulling out his ad campaign or they're pausing it because they don't know what's going on. They're like, mm, yeah, we don't want this. We don't want no trouble. We don't want any trouble. Now, you know, that does kind of suck. I understand from the army's perspective, like, pff, listen, I, listen, I, I put that tweet out already. I already said I'm putting Kang Gang on hold. <laughs> you know, I was like, look, I don't know what's going on. The whole reason why I really pushed the Kang Gang was because I really enjoy Jonathan Majors as an actor. And him being king, I love that. But if he is guilty, if I can't, I'm not going to feel as good about that. I'm just not going to feel that way, right? So I'm like, look, I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm not saying he's innocent, but I'm putting it on pause, right? But I'm not going to lie. It is kind of messed up. And I'm guilty of it too. I'm guilty of it too. It is kind of messed up that we don't fully embrace as a culture. We don't fully embrace the ideology that we state innocent until proven guilty. We don't live that out. Let's be honest. People say it all the time but we really don't live it out as a collective society because like myself, I'm not going to say nothing, but I'm going to just step back. Right. That's what the army did. They're like, yo, we're not going to say nothing, but we're going to step back. And then you got other people that are like, nah, he trash. I'm never going to believe anything. He going to say again. Cause you didn't want to give him the presumption of innocence, you know? So, cause again, you got the legal court, then you got the court of public opinion. And the latter one is tough. That is tough. So the newest development that we do have is the fact that now the lawyer has released the text. From the alleged victim and says that the woman admitted fault oh okay let's go into this text yikes that is small let's see if i can uh i got it here for y'all Ooh, sorry this text is very very small so i'll do my best to read it off to y'all uh let me get the banner out the way for y'all so the text start off and i'm assuming this is um her text messages maybe um but it says uh there's no note just you knowing what happened um majors text back and said did you leave the keys goodbye blank we don't know what he said maybe it was her name maybe it was something else we don't know but he goes on to say, or she goes on to say, please let me know you're okay when you get this. They assured me that you won't be charged. They said they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and they knew we had a fight. 
I'm so angry that they did. And I'm so sorry you're in this position. We'll make sure nothing happens about this. I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone. Um, I only just got out of the hospital. Just call me when you're out. No response. I love you. No response. She goes back. They just called again to check on me. And I reiterated how this was not in an attack. And they do not have my blessing on any charges being placed. I read the paper they gave me about strangulation. And I said, point blank, this did not occur and should be removed immediately. The judge is definitely going to be told this. She ensured this to me. I know you have the best team and there's nothing to worry about. I just want you to know that I'm doing all I can on my end. I also said to tell the judge to know what the origin of the call was to do with me collapsing and passing out and your worry as my partner due to our communication prior. Out of care. She promised with all, well, all will be relayed. All right. So here's where this gets interesting. Now, some people would look at this and say, case closed. Some people will say, there you have it. Some people will say, it, it's done. I would say that when I've talked to people who are experts in the field of domestic violence, so they, you know, they're social workers, they, they work in this field. When they look at a text like this, they're like, nope, this is literally how th this happens all the time in domestic violence situations. Again, I'm not saying he did it. I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm saying that people that are familiar with these situations say, Victims of abuse will go out of their way to be like, no, no, no. It's not your fault that you beat me. It was my fault. It's not your fault you got mad. I made you mad. So again, I'm not saying that this fully exonerates him. And I'm also not saying it fully, you know, indicts him either. There are a couple troubling things here, though. Going back to the way everything was reported. Remember, the whole report, the allegation was that when they got into this car, she supposedly was checking his phone and then the altercation happened. And that is where wounds, bruises or whatever occurred because of what happened in that car. And then we also saw after they got out of the car, Jonathan Majors called up the 911, whether there was another call or not, we don't know. But he called up to basically, you know, because of his care for the girlfriend or, or whatever. But when the police arrived, she went to them and was like, yo, I've been assaulted. And they saw bruises. They saw markings. And you saw in that text message, she acknowledged that there were wounds, that there was actual an, an altercation that happened. So now the question is really like, OK, where did those wounds come from? Because if you're looking at it from the perspective of the police, they're looking at it like, OK, all I know is I see somebody who has injuries, somebody who had injuries to the point where they had to go to the hospital. And we have an allegation from that person with injuries against that person. Whether that other person called the police or not, this is what we have to work with. So by law, by the pr procedure, they had to arrest them. But again, the district attorney office saw enough evidence, not saying it's true or not, to go ahead and be like, no, nah, we got a case and we gonna charge you with X, Y, and Z. So with this now um, being the case, I'm sitting here like, you know what? There's her side, his side, and clearly there's gotta be the truth somewhere in there. I don't know what happened. Because there are a lot of things that are not being easily explained at this point. And I don't think that there are things that um, people can easily uh, take away. Because honestly, just because she said it was my fault, I, I, I'm going to tell the judge not to, again, abuse victims. I mean, there is a Stockholm Syndrome thing out there, right? Like, that stuff happens. Did it happen here? I'm not saying it did. I'm just saying we can't use this as a way to fully exonerate or to fully indict. It's not enough. This text message is not enough. Because, again, there is a long history of people that have been abused that recant their statements that don't want to press charges because they don't want to be bullied. They don't want to be abused. They, or maybe I don't know. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that could be the case. And I think this is where we have to start to think about what do we know and what do we not know? Because to me, I'm sitting here thinking like, you know what? Maybe Jonathan Majors is an abuser. Maybe because those bruises, I don't know where they came from. I don't know. Maybe he did. Or maybe Jonathan Majors is completely innocent because some other things that I don't know. I don't know who this woman is. Does she have mental health issues? Were drugs involved? Were they both drunk? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know either way. But I don't know. I, I know one thing. I need to see this video. I want to see this video. And to be honest with you, I don't even know if seeing the video is still going to answer everything. I don't know. Because I'm wondering. I'm like, look, this video better show beginning of the ride to the end of the ride. And at this point, I need to see. I don't know if the video can show this. Can you show? where these bruises or strangulation and all that, where did that come from? Because what, what, what got into her to tell the police, this is what happened to me. Maybe it happened. Maybe she's out of her mind. 
We don't know. So the video's got to be the only thing, I think, at this point that could really clear everything up. Um, I'd also like to hear from the Uber driver also <clears throat> and whatever other people that were around. I, I mean, listen, all the evidence that, that that can come out, I hope it comes out. And I hope, I hope if he's guilty, throw him away. If you're out here beating on women, trash, or what, throw him away. I don't care. I don't care if you're my favorite actor. Get out of my face. If you're innocent, I need all of that stuff explained. I need a full exoneration. I need all this stuff dropped off his record. I would love to hear like public apology. Like y'all better, listen, if he's innocent, all that energy that was going into saying that he was terrible, bad, about, I need all of that stuff to go away because then that's not fair. It's not fair to like try and uh, uh, prosecute somebody before without even having all that evidence and stuff. So now the question is, well, what is Marvel going to do? Right. What, what, what can Marvel do? Should they recast? Should they not recast? What happens now? I've already said that um, I don't believe that they should do anything right now, because if we don't know definitively what happened, how would they know? What definitely be, you know, happened. They, unless they saw the video, unless they have evidence, I don't know. But to me, I'm like, don't y'all dare go recast him yet. Don't y'all dare go fire him yet. Again, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about with Ezra Miller. We seen how WB just sat there and be, they were quiet. They was like, no, no. The funny thing is, we actually have video of Ezra Miller. We actually have uh, uh, arrests. We have an admission of guilt by Ezra Miller for, for, for uh, uh, larceny or uh, th uh, being a thief or whatever. We have restraining orders. We have witnesses, testimony. We have a lot against Ezra Miller. And Ezra still hasn't been fired. So there's 10 times more evidence. There's 10 times more allegations. There's far more, oh, the grooming of children. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to play a competition. For me, that's a lot worse and potentially abusing children or whatever the allegation is. You have all of that going on and Ezra has not been recast, at least not yet. And Ezra's also been given the grace of, ah, they got mental health issues. Okay. So I don't believe Marvel should or even Disney, because sometimes Disney will overstep and overrule Marvel. I don't believe that they should do that unless, again, Majors is found completely guilty. Like, if this video comes out, and if this video is like Ray Rice, if you've seen that Ray Rice, oh my God, if you follow the Ray Rice situation, we all heard, oh man, Ray Rice beat on his wife and da da da, and it was bad. Okay, suspend him. Okay, Ray Rice, Ray Rice, bad guy, bad guy. You need to get punished, whatever. Then we saw that video, and we was like, oh no, you gutter trash. Oh, you a terrible human being. What? So one way or another, this video for Jonathan Majors has to be the complete opposite of what happened with Ray Rice to prove him innocent. I think it has to be. But we'll see. This is what his lawyer says. His lawyer says completely innocent, you know. Um, but now the question is, what is Marvel going to do? So apparently, you know, they're discussing options, according to um, an industry insider. Uh, and they have said that I've heard that Marvel hasn't made any decisions regarding Jonathan Majors, but they've met or spoken with to his agent to his agent to discuss potential options going forward. All right. All right. Um, at least they're talking. At least they're talking. And I, I'm, I'm glad that they are at least having a conversation and not jumping to conclusions. Marvel's not going out there saying like, oh, Jonathan Majors didn't do nothing. Leave him alone. But they're also not saying like, well, you fired. Wait, be patient. Just like we do with every other situation with a lot of people when we don't have enough evidence yet. Be patient. So, whew, okay. Um, that's it for Jonathan Majors. I think right now, Again, because of where we are. And the, I think the video is going to be key. I think the video is going to be key for public perception. I think it's going to be key for the actual lawsuit. I think it's going to be key, obviously, for his future in the MCU. Um, and I also think that at the end of the day, like, if Marvel needs to recast, they can. Like, it's not going to be hard. You know, as great as Jonathan Majors is um, as an actor, um, you know, they've already created the precedent that variants don't have to look alike. And we saw a whole council of Kang's variants. We saw uh, um, Kang as a lizard person, you know? So if they wanted to make Kang whatever, they could do whatever. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. So uh, let us, so y'all let me know. What do you think about the Jonathan Majors situation? Um, how do you feel about all the evidence that has come out so far? Um, how do you feel about, do you think Marvel should recast them? Um, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I know this is a tough subject for a lot of people. I know that, um, you know, domestic violence is a very serious allegation and situation. Um, as I've told you, there's also a long history of black men specifically being, you know, targeted. You know, all of these things could be the case. And I, I bring these things up not to tear a victim down. I don't bring this up to elevate anybody. I'm just saying we don't know. And all these possibilities exist. So I think jumping to either conclusion is premature. That's my that's just my opinion. Um, so anyway, y'all let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. This was just a segment of one of my live chats. And if you're interested in joining in on the next one, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all. And until next time, I'll see you all later.